Welcome to the November 2023 edition of the Inside Nutley podcast. I'm your host, Tom Greco, and today we are going to talk with Handy Bolt Olympian, athlete, coach, mentor, friend, and 2008 Nutley High School graduate, Louis Riccardi. Welcome, Lou. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thank you for doing this. Anytime. Thank you. The first thing I want to ask you about is your 14 medals at the Paralympics. Tell me about that experience. So I was selected to go from my um, track and field team that I, I was on. I was um, selected to go to South Africa. And I um, competed in swimming events, uh, all the strokes, um, um, freestyle, breaststroke, um, backstroke, and butterfly. Um, and then I competed in field events, javelin, discus, and shot put. And I brought home, I was competing against six, I think 60 people. And I uh, came back with uh, 14 medals. Um, so I did pretty, I did pretty good. I got mo- mostly, I got second, but I got some first as well. That's so. true. That's amazing. How, how do you qualify for something like that? Um, you have to go through certain timings and um, certain like, uh, not classes, um, certain like, um, events um that you have to uh qualifying events and they pick the like the best people all through the country or or just jersey there was seven there was 17 different um everyone there was two people that were from jersey that went that year and then uh we met in dc and we flew to south africa there was seven 17 to 20 of us that went so we were all competed um from all over the usa what was South Africa like? I uh, um we went to Johannesburg and um Johannesburg, if you could put it to like the people, um it's like New York, uh crazier New York. Oh, really? I um I think it's a little bit crazier New York. Um, but then we went to um Kruger National Park and we did like a safari. Mm-hmm. And my background is hunting, fishing, and I love the outdoors. I actually like that better than um the actual competing part um it was enjoyable we got to sleep in like a hut and stuff um it was actually an it's an eye opener for me because um it's not we're we're spoiled here right in south africa they don't they were carried they were walking like five miles just to get water so it was it's a little different right so, well, did you see elephants tigers all that kind of stuff we saw elephants um rhinos cape buffalo um hyenas and gira- a lot of giraffes um uh a couple other things but majority of what i just said it must so. be pretty it must be pretty amazing to see them in the natural habitat i mean I- i've only ever seen them at either great adventure or disney world oh it's it's totally different than seeing them in behind the cage you're literally right there with them it's actually scary um quick story when we were in south africa and on that um like the safari we um so i was in the front because i just i like talking to the guy and he um i i wanted to talk to him about like the outdoors and stuff so we we went around this corner and i um went to i was like hey i think you better back out of here because there's an elephant that doesn't look happy he didn't want me it was a two-ton elephant and he wanted to be alone. We snuck up on him. His ears went back and he started like stomping at us. I'm like, you got to hightail it out of here. He didn't see him. He goes, um, let's, all right, let's go backwards. We backed it out. We just got out of his space because they could knock over a van. No problem. Right. Uh, wow. So we just hightailed it out of there. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. What was the, uh, what was the actual um, Olympic ceremonies like? What I was on was the I was team. It's the international uh, wheelchair amputee sports, mm-hmm. and so pretty much it's the it's a step lower than the Paralympics. Okay. Um, and the Paralympics and the Olympics are about the same, just with accessible sporting for uh, handicap, and I uh, every everything is accessibilized. Okay, so, so yeah, it's I'm- pretty much the same thing. That's that's quite an accomplishment, Lou. I mean, that's that's just it's an amazing thing. Thank you, thank you. Let's go back to the beginning. In 1989, you were born with spinal bifida. Can you explain what that is? So when I was born, um, my 
my back has um can you picture like a um baby's head a soft spot i um i was born with a soft spot in my back my back was not fully developed when i was uh when i was born and when i was a day old i had an 11 hour surgery to actually close up my back and straighten out all the nerves that hit air and try uh basically die and so I, um, where I'm paralyzed from, it's partially from the waist down and fully from the knees down. I have no feeling from my knees down. And that's because when they did the 11 hour surgery, they tried to straighten the nerves when they hit air, they go like this. Um, so what they tried doing was they tried straightening it out and like making the, um, the nerves as long as they can. Um, but the bo bottom, the longer nerve, excuse me, the longer nerves they were, um, because they hit air, they kind of died. So that's where I'm paralyzed from. And you, and you also have learning disabilities as well, correct? Yes, I do. I have um, a, a programmable VP shunt in my head, and it, I have hydrocephalus, so it's water on the brain. And um, it gives me, I've had four brain, uh, brain surgeries. And they, um, it does give you le like learning disabilities. I'm more of a visual and uh, hands on than I am audio. So if someone says, if someone says something to me and tells me to write it down, I would have to have them repeat it like 10 times, say. But if it's written on like the chalkboard, I could write it down, no problem. So with, with uh, all those, disabilities tell me about your your childhood what was it like growing up i went to um radcliffe school um and i did when i was younger i didn't think i was handicapped because i had such good family support i um i had such good family support they never treated me as handicapped they treated me i always like to say handy able mm -hmm. because i do so much right um it was it was different though because I was a lot slower than the like able body kids. I um I I was on crutches and braces at the time, and I was like um I was a little slower. I was a little delayed back, but middle school comes and I switched to the wheelchair because of the bigger school. Right. And I um I, I kept up with my friends. I was like, you know what, this is for me because I was, it was a lot better and faster. I didn't have to transfer. And my seventh grade, seventh into eighth grade, I got um, really sick. I um, formed a pressure sore. And cause no, nobody told me that I had a shift um, in the wheelchair. Right. Um, so I basically got a pressure sore from sitting in the wheelchair. I missed my eighth grade. I was there for two months and four days. Wow. So I missed the whole year. I was I was in the hospital 300 days that year. Wow. And so that that was a rough that was a rough year for me. Yeah. Um okay. I went into the hospital that year of blood of uh, blood pressure of 50 over 38. And so I was I was really not healthy that year. Um so but being born disabled I wasn't, um, I, I'll tell you the truth. I wouldn't have the opportunities. I don't believe so that I do have now. Like I've been rock climbing. I've been scuba diving. I've done so much. And I when I've done everything. I don't let the wheelchair stop me. Um, and that's all due to family support. If I wanted something, they would tell me, go get it. Don't, don't do, um, don't tell me, oh, give me that, give me that, um, go get it, go do it yourself. So it, I had very good family support, family and friends support. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have two older brothers. And, and none of them have disabilities? No. Wow. Did the, did, I mean, I, I vaguely remember that, that uh, there were some uh, charity things. I mean, did the community step up for you? They did many times. They uh, ran pro, um, fundraisers. They ran um, other things for me. Yes, it was a long time ago. I'm 34, so it was a while ago. Right, but not every community would do that, though. I mean, no, not at all. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Um, 
So you, you attended Radcliffe, then you mm -hmm. went to to uh, John Walker, and mm -hmm. then Nut Nutley High. What were yep. some of, What were some of the biggest challenges that you had at school? I mean, every, I should say, not only at school. I mean, uh, when you're going through those age, everybody has certain challenges, but certain definitely challenges. Yeah, not definitely not the ones that to the extent that you have. But to, what was what was that like for you? Um, in middle school, I, I again I got sick. Um, and I was in the hospital most of the time. I was in my house in the hospital bed for uh, 17 weeks. And so seventh and eighth grade is a memory, mm -hmm. but kind of like a blur yeah. because of the fact that I just, um, I wasn't, I wasn't with it. And, um, but growing up and I want, and the reason why I say I'm handy able is because I, I've went to um, regular school. I went to, uh, and when I was younger, I'm going to back up a minute. Um, when I was younger, I went to the Elks Club um, camp, Elks Moor. And they, I called the first year, I remember the first year I went, I forget how old I was. I was young. They, and I, I called my mom and was like, and my dad, I was like, listen, there's too many handicapped people here. I can't, I can't deal with this. I'm like, come pick me up because I was never brought up handicapped. Right. I was always brought up as me uh, me being uh able bodied. Just I just have something different. That's all. Right. So did you have the but you know it, it couldn't have been easy going, you know, in, in high school, especially getting to class on time and all that kind of stuff. I mean I, I'm just curious. So what what, what what they did for me um for like classes wise in elementary school, they always had an aide with me um, to go to class to class or whatever, go up and down the stairs. Middle school comes, and I, I like to be as independent as I can. Middle school comes, they issued me an aide. And I'm like, listen, can I, I did it for seventh grade, and I did it for eighth grade. And I'm like, listen, I don't want, want an aide to do for me what I can do for myself. I feel like I, I was being baby. I want to be just like the regular kids. So what they did was they gave me an aid in freshman year. And I complained about it again. <laughs> um, I have nothing against the aid at all. Right. Um, I just wanted to do, I wanted it to be a learning for me. And so like I was in a wheelchair at the time and I would go, I would open the door for her. Um, <laughs> And so, cause I was always fast. And so I was like, you know what? I went to the higher, like the stu child study team. And I was like, listen, I'm perfectly fine doing everything on my own. If they, if I could have an aide in the classroom to ha have me take notes, help me take notes. And that's it. I'll be fine with that. So what they ended up doing was they're like, all right, let's try it. They, they gave me a student to go with me to ride the elevator. Right. And I'm like, why? Like the student is going to, is late every, every day. I'm like, I don't like being late. I'm here on time, but I have to wait just to <laughs> ride the elevator up and down the elevator um, to three floors. Right. And I'm like, listen, I could do this on my own. So then they gave me a walkie talkie and the walkie talkie, no lie was this big. <laughs> <laughs> And I was, so I held it for a couple of times and I was the kind of student that never was where I was supposed to be. Okay. The, um, the fire department always had my schedule, but I was never where I was supposed to be. <laughs> I was never in class. I was always roaming the halls. Um, I, um, so I saw, I was roaming the halls one day and the nurse had the other radio and the other radio was on the nurse's desk. The nurse wasn't in her office. And I was like, why am I carrying this big thing around? And no <laughs> one's going to answer it anyway. So I I go like this. I was like, all right, I'll just leave that at home. I got permission from the principals and stuff to actually carry my cell phone. Okay. Um, so if in an emergency, I can call, hey, I'm okay. Um, this is what's going on. So... um. They had, uh, so they were okay with that. My last two years of high school, they let me go without an aid and everything. 
Where do you think this streak of independence came from? Was it from your, your folks? I, I'm going to give that, I'm going to give all credit to my family and friends right. because they always made me strive for doing things on my own. I always strive for independence. And you also excelled at sports in Nelly High, correct? Yes, I was a four-year letter winner of uh, track and field. Wow, that must have been fun. Yeah, I um I got to go to the champion uh meet of champions, um four years because of the tra- um the wheelchair. Um, me and Mister Odell got um I pushed for the field events javelin, shot put, and discus to be put into the um for the handicap. I, me and uh, Mr. Abdel got it pushed in to um, the state meet because they didn't have, they only had racing. Right. And I have a lot of stomach issues and I can't bend down in that wheelchair. It's a three wheeled wheelchair, has two wheels like this, and then one wheel out here. Right. I, didn't, I never liked it. I, mm-hmm. I just can't bend down. I don't have the right motion. Um, so I was more of a field event. And so me and Mr. Adele, he we pushed for that as um to get into the champion meet of champions. I'm sorry. That's amazing. And you're still very active in sports today, right? I do right now. I'm doing taekwondo. Um, I just don't I don't kick because of the wheelchair. Right. But I do um taekwondo, and I'm on a youth ho- uh, sled ice hockey team. Yeah. I um I coach other um handicapped kids so they could um excel in the sport like I have. And and you're skydiving? I went yeah, that was a dream of mine since I was like 18. So um, about that. Everybody went out um so it was just one day my best friend and another person were talking, "Hey, I'm going skydiving with my cousins." And she's my best friend, so I and I I'm a security guard. So I, I have very good hearing and I know what I know my surroundings. Um and all of a sudden my my friend Christy goes, I'm going skydiving um to the one girl and she goes, Can I come? And I'm like, You guys are going skydiving and you didn't invite me? They're like they looked at me like you could do this. I'm like, Yeah, I've been wanting to do that since I was 18 years old. I'm like, I'm coming with you. <laughs> and um so we went to East Stroudsburg, PA. There's a little a couple of things different because I was in a wheelchair. Yeah. They had to make sure I was flexible enough. They had to make sure I was not too heavy. Um, they had to make sure I was like mobile a little bit. Um, so the guy spent a little time with me asking questions. And then um, you go on the plane and you go, we went up to about 15,000 feet. And um uh, the the I'm getting chills just talking about this, and um the uh the adrenaline is through the roof, and um so I'm you're always tandem to somebody for the first fifteen dives, right? And um so then uh we we go down you're you're free falling for about a minute minute and a half, and they um then you put out the parachute. And so the guy goes, Lou, take the reins and um, pull down to your left. So I'm pretty strong upper body. I pull straight down to my left side. The parachute went from here to here in matter of like seconds. I was like, wow, I didn't know it was that responsive. Mm-hmm. And it was just gliding through the air was the we went in October. So it was a little cold. The trees looked like they were actually like on fire because really? it was like yellow, orange, and red. It was it was absolutely gorgeous. And I, again, I'm getting chills just talking about it, goosebumps and everything. I'm um, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I loved it so much. That's great. So, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, it was so. I I recommend anyone trying it. If a handicapped person could do it, anybody could do it. You being able to do that and being that brave to do it is 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 fascinating. It really yeah. is. Thank you. So you graduated in 2008 and you were asked to speak at the graduating class. How did that come about? The principal, um, he uh, wanted me to be, um, he took me aside, me and the family, he called me and my family in. And he um, asked me to be an honorary guest speaker from him. 
And so the I know all the class agreed with it because they all out of the four years I was in high school, there was two wheelchairs. And so I was I got to, not to say it out loud, but I pretty much did what I want because I was the only person in a wheelchair. <laughs> um you had the and, rule of school. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so I um but he really they I inspired them, I guess. Um, and so I led the, um, and at the time I was in the wheelchair, but I was still on the crutches semi, um, my goal, I didn't care how much I walked in the past. My goal was to walk down the stairs with my graduating class. And so I had to get my physical therapist in and show them that I could do it in a timely manner, a safe, timely manner. And they, um, they, I showed them that I could do it. We practiced it over and over again. We had my chair um, on the field for my uh, chair that I would sit in for graduating. And then I walked up to get my diploma. I felt more comfortable in the chair mm -hmm. um, reading the speech. I thanked um, Nutley um, and I uh, congratulated all my um, my colleagues that graduated with me. Um, and I told them like a story that look at me and don't ever, if you want to do something, don't ever give up. And I was, I really truly believe that if you want to do something and put it in your mind that you want to do it, you, you can do anything of your ability. And so I told them, I told the class that, and I basically, a lot of the speeches that I write, it comes from within mm -hmm. and I make a lot of people cry. <laughs> 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 that's, a, that's a good thing in, in terms of me, writing speeches. Yeah, I mean, it's very effective then, right? Yeah. That's great. That must have been a thrill. It was. Yeah. It was. So then tell me about Dare to Dream. So Dare to Dream is a self-advocacy um, program that teaches handicapped people to self-advocate for themselves um, and to help others. I, um, it's a, like a, Again, self-advocacy program, you go to different high schools, you go to a college, and you do like meeting groups. And that's, it's really an eye-opener because there's so many different variable um, of disabilities. Um, they, uh, there's like everybody there and they're all there for the same purpose. And so they um, were it really was a helper for me to say what I wanted to say because it really opened me up saying that um, it really uh, shows that if you want something, so don't be afraid to blurt it out and say it kind of thing. How'd you get involved with it? Uh, Mrs. Romalia from uh, the child study team, she got me into the Dare to Dream. Okay. Um, she was like, she thinks it would be a good idea for me to join it because of my positive attitude and I could help a lot more people. Right. So. All right. So you graduate and you go to Essex County College. Yes. what did you study there? I did just a basic degree of liberal arts just because um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And as I come find out, school really wasn't my forte. Mm -hmm. It it was uh, because of my learning disabilities, I struggled a lot. If it wasn't for my family, I wouldn't have passed half the classes. You graduated from Essex County? Yes, I did. And I did got you, my associates. Did you go right to uh, Clara Moss then? I started out volunteering. And I asked them, I asked them when I was 18. And I asked them if I could get a job. And they said, because of the, the wheelchair, they really couldn't. A um, couple of years later, I um, went back volunteering and my mom was like, you got to get you got to get a job. You really got to get out of the house and got to get a job. Like um, every like every mom says. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so I went back volunteering just to get out of the house. And I was there from like one thirty in the afternoon till sometimes 11 o'clock at night and like only three days a week, though. But. I guess they saw that I was dedicated and 
just from hearsay, I, I was in the office and I heard them talking, hey, we need to hire some per diems. I'm like, hey, listen, can you, can, my mom's making me get a job. Can you guys, I'm here more than one shift. It's an eight hour shift. I'm here more than you guys are. And I was like, you see, I'm dedicated. Can you guys help me out? And so they go, yeah, you know what? We can't, we'll, we'll work on it. Um, I come home, I talked to my, my brother's friend and he was like, Hey, what do you want to do? I'm like, I would love to become a security guard, but they're giving me the wheelchair issue saying I can't do it. Right. And so he, I didn't know this. He made a call to his partner's dad, which was all, uh, he, he was the head of all of uh, St. Barnabas hospitals security. Right. And so he goes, no, you're giving this person a job like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and so what they did was they made me a position as an aide, um, a security guard aide. Mm -hmm. And um, they, uh, it took maybe about four months to get it processed because they had to make a position and like all my duties and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um so yeah, I started ten years ago, um, on October seventh. Wow, so you just had your anniversary. Yeah, yep. That's that's great. You enjoy it? I do. You see you seem to reach all of your goals. How do you keep such a positive attitude? I ha I always want to if I want to do something, I always set like a marker to to do it. I do have I'm not gonna lie. I do have a lazy side to me <laughs> and like um, not to backtrack, but when I was on sled ice hockey, I was, I was 17, 18 and I was doing um, 750 pushups a night. And I really wanted to be, I wanted to be the best, but I didn't want to practice because of the lazy side. And so I, um, if I wanted to do something, I have the dedication to actually do it. Like if I, if, but it, it same goes, if I don't want to do something, I'm not, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and there's no like changing my mind on that. <laughs> but still, again, it goes, you've, you've had to learn that from, I assume your family and friends, like you said, because your, your outlook, I mean, you've, you've been dealt some some lousy cards i mean let's let's that's the truth right yeah but yeah. but yeah but yeah you have you exude such a positive attitude and and all the things that you've accomplished it's just it's it's just it's really amazing to to see thank you i um so as you said i was dealt with crappy cards i look at it like i'm a card player so i look at it like this i was dealt with those cards i can't change it so why not deal with it and so that's my outlook. If like a lot of my friends that are disabled, they get depressed that they can't do this. They can't do that. I figure out like if there's an obstacle in front of me, I'll figure out how to get around it. It like if the say for high school, if the fire alarms went off and I was on the third floor, I'm not staying in a burning building. <laughs> I, I, I told my one teacher, um, she goes, the fire alarms go off unannounced. Um, and so she looks at me like, what are we going to do? I'm like, don't worry. I got this. I'm like, do you trust me? She's like, no. <laughs> she, cause she knew like my attitude. So I basically got on the ground. I went down heads first, just walked myself down on my hands. And really? I got to this, the first level of the first floor and the bell stopped. I'm like, oh, uh, like now what? So I had to go back all the way upstairs to get in my wheelchair before the kids started trampling me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. So I made it up in my wheelchair just in time. Um, and my teacher looks at me. She's like, you know you're crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it it all goes back to determination. Again, if you want to do something or you have to do something, you're going to do it. What are some of your favorite memories of growing up in Nutley? I have a lot. Um, 
mostly of what how supportive the town were and um the the support that the um the elementary schools and like the kids gave to me um again i was sick for the um eighth grade and they made a uh, like the student council they made a video um like get well soon video for me and they presented that to me as like a get well soon when i was in the, when i was in the hospital so that that sat with a lot of my friends did it that sat with me and it still does um i like the fact that nobody really treated me other than other than outsiders nobody really treated me as handicapped because they saw that i could i could do things and so they um were like they always treated me as a, just a person do you attribute that to to nutley i, I do, do you think most towns are like that or you think that there's something special about nutley i think that i i don't think most towns are like that because some i have friends that are, live in south some other towns and they have disabled um a person in their life and they don't give them the beneficial um benefit of, uh benefit of the doubt i'm sorry um so they uh they don't reach out to them they don't bend over backwards for them i feel like nutley did that for me and there's a lot of support in nutley what are some of the things you love most about nutley I do, I do like the like closeness that like, you go around the corner you know every everybody's name I I like that I do like that it's only two square miles um if I had to I could wheel down to the shop right I could wheel um to wherever I needed to go within proximity um I do uh I like I, again I I'm Italian I like the fact that everybody pretty much knows your name i it's funny i when i was younger i told the mayor um that i was going to take his job one day because i know so many people <laughs> you you probably could <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is, is politics in your future lou <laughs> um not really <laughs> trust, trust me you, you don't want the job you really uh, don't want the job. Not the, now, no. The 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 pay the pay is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna show you a couple pictures. Uh, just uh, tell me what you think of when you see them. All right. Okay. It definitely brings back. That's high school. Um, high school memories. It definitely brings back. Um, memories of going through, like, I I love wheeling down the hall and um of the high school. I uh it definitely brings back a lot of like friendship memories that I haven't um had in a long time. I kind of don't keep in touch with people. Um and there's a couple of people that were in high school that I was close to and I I miss that. I do. But I'm not one to just reach out, I guess. Uh that was the track and field. I um definitely brings back memories. I bonded with most of those kids that were on the field, track and field team. They would, they were jealous because I'd never had a like warm up, I guess, <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, I just, I didn't have to. Um, I was, cause I was only thrown. And then, so they wanted me to do the track for a little bit and go around. I'm like, I'm really not into this. So can I go to the field part of it? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so. That definitely brings back um the that's the fashion show um that we ran. I forget what year. Um, but that was um I was dressed up and Jen Alessio, um, she walked she actually walked with me uh on with the fashion show. I um that does bring back a lot of memories because I um I had spinners actually on my wheelchair at the time. Oh really? And I had a, a, I hooked up a red flashing, like a red flashing light that was like this big. And, um, I definitely, um, it was, I was shining back then. <laughs> so. 
and that's Mr. Catcherbone with you, right? Yes. Let me run a couple things by you. It's it's uh it's, it's basically I'm gonna give you two things. You tell me which which you like or which what you, what you're gonna go with, right? Giants or Jets? Giants, definitely. Yeah, are- my 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 best friend is a, a Jet fan, and I tell him, you know what Jet stands for? Just end the season. <laughs> I I can't say that this year because my Giants absolutely suck. <laughs> <laughs> But definitely Giants. <laughs> okay. Yankees or Mets? Yankees. Okay. Favorite Jersey Shore Town? Jersey Shore Town. Uh, I like Point Pleasant. I like um, Atlantic Highlands a lot because Atlantic Highlands, I go down fishing all the time. Um, I like Belmar, but probably Point Pleasant. And Atlantic Highlands are okay. my top. Springsteen or Bon Jovi? Wow. Um, bon Jovi. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're from Jersey, you got. I think you have to like both of them. You kind of have to like both of them. <laughs> yeah, yep. you know. So uh, uh, last week you were inducted into the Nutley Hall of Fame. Tell us yes, what that. Was. Tell us what that was like. I was thrilled. And. Then going to the ceremony on the nineteenth of this month, I was I was really honored because of the people, other people I was with. I I work one day a week, and yes, I've done out of a whole, I've done a lot, but I um these people like they're multi 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 millionaires. They invented something. They came up with um music so like i felt honored because i only work one day a week i'm nowhere near a multimillionaire, and so it really hit me hard be hearing their stories and then hearing mine i um was very honored to be with them but you have to realize that with all of your accomplishments you're just as rich as they are yes and that's what and that's what it comes down to with uh um because i've done a whole bunch of things so and that's why they nominated me because i people look up to me um they really look up to me because of all i've done and i'm in a wheelchair i'm an outdoorsman i like to go fishing i like to go hunting i ride quads i i've been horseback riding so i um and if again if i want to do something if you want to do something you got to don't just put it on. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Put your mind to it and just do it because it, that's the only way it's going to get done. Honestly. What are you most proud of Lou? I guess it's goes back to family. Um, I'm most proud of family support because if it wasn't for family support, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Um, and that goes back way back to my family. Um, so I'm going to give that to family. Lou Riccardi, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. You are absolutely an inspiration to all who meet you or read about you or watch you on this show. So again, I want to say thank you for your time. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you. Merry Christmas, Lou. Merry Christmas and happy new year. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye.